Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. So I recently shared with you that accused pedophile and child sex trafficker Ghislaine Maxwell is trying to get out of prison in time for Christmas. If you're not familiar with this, I'll just give you a brief rundown. Her attorneys recently submitted a request to the court which outlined all the reasons why she's not a flight risk, even though she has a vast amount of wealth and connections all over the world. One of the main arguments they presented was her relationship with her husband of four years, Scott Borgerson, which she originally tried to keep secret. They claim that she would never leave the country because she was so in love and she would never want to leave him behind. Well, yeah, no. It's now come to light that, like most everything else that comes out of her mouth, that this was a complete fabrication, along with many other details. So in a court filing last week, acting U.S. Attorney Audrey Strauss refuted Maxwell's excuse, and she said that after Maxwell was arrested, she told investigators that she was, quote, in the process of divorcing her husband. Hmm, so in love. In addition, Maxwell also asked to be released to home confinement with an ankle monitor but she wasn't planning on staying with her husband if the court granted their request. Instead, she was asking to stay with a friend, and we don't know the name of that friend because it was redacted in the court documents for safety reasons. But how in love can you be <laughs> that you've been away from your spouse for how long and you don't want to go back and stay with them? You want to stay with a friend in a completely different state? Uh, I believe it said that the friend that she wanted to stay with is in New York, and I believe that he lives in, it's either Maine or it's other, it's some other East Coast state, but it's not New York. And apparently, Maxwell and Borgerson had established a trust account sometime around 2018, and when they filled out the section where they're required to list their marital status, they each stated that they were single. Now, that could be for tax reasons or something like that, but they're, they're clearly not above lying. And the U.S. attorney rightfully questioned, why has it taken her loving husband so long to come forward and bail her out? Maxwell has been in prison since July, yet Borgerson just now realized that he'd like to be with his beloved wife He'd like to get her out of prison five months later. And, you know, this revelation about her changing her marital status makes me question where this bail money is really coming from. According to the bail request that Maxwell filed, more than $22 million was coming from their combined assets. And that allegedly is the sum total of their assets. So you're telling me that Borgerson would potentially risk losing all of his wealth for one, a, a woman he's only been married to for four years, and two, for a woman who is planning to divorce him just recently? Yeah. And she also allegedly lied about their assets and their pretrial documents. And she claimed that it was way lower than what they're claiming now. So now they're saying they have this $22.5 in assets, but the prosecutor said, mm, that's not what they told us back in July. <laughs> and how hard would it be for someone else to funnel the money through Borgerson's account to make it look as though he was making the bail payment? I don't think that they can subpoena his bank records to see if there was a recent deposit matching that amount, right? It's not very hard. That's not something I believe you, that they can typically do to make sure that the money is coming from him. And even so, how hard would it be? All these wealthy people go and set up shell corporations that can't be traced back to the person that they truly belong to. How hard would it be for someone to do that? and deposit the money into that account. Borgerson pays for the bail out of his bank account, so it truly did come from him. And then after everything settles down, nobody's paying attention to him anymore, 
he goes and gets money from that other account. And remember, it's only like 10% or something. So he's not literally putting up 22.5 million. He's putting up a fraction of that. And then if things don't pan out and Maxwell flees and she doesn't show up for her court appearances, then he loses that money. And they're all such liars. Even Maxwell's friends, everything they've told reporters is just a load of BS. I don't know if they believe it and they're, you know, and they're just parroting some of her lies or if they just haven't been paying attention. I mean, truly it's disgusting. Some of them have likened her to Princess Diana. So many of them are saying, oh, she's such a wonderful person. I would, I would feel totally comfortable leaving her with my children. I have her around my daughters all the time and they love her. I have no concerns about it. Oh, God. Seriously, people wake up. But then some of the, just the facts, just some of the things that they claim she's going through right now are just a bunch of BS. They claim she's not allowed out of her cell. She's never allowed out in, in the fresh air. The state already came forward and showed the judge proof that she gets her three hours a day out of her cell, just as all of the other inmates do. She gets additional time with her attorneys and she gets time outside. It's just in private because they're worried about somebody going and shiving her to death. They also wrongfully claim that Maxwell wasn't investigated and she wasn't a concern until after Epstein died. One of her friends said that she's being used as a scapegoat because they're so embarrassed by Epstein's suicide and they weren't able to prosecute him. And so they're just trying to pin it all on her. Where have these people been? There have been multiple lawsuits against Maxwell. I'd have to go back and look at the dates, but I know for a fact that the one that Virginia Roberts Gouffre filed, that was settled out of court prior to Epstein even being arrested in 2019. That's where we're getting Maxwell's depositions from. That happened prior to Epstein even being arrested, let alone his so-called suicide. Where have these people been? Uh, seriously, it's like they just take her at her word. They don't look into anything. And one of her friends told the Daily Mail something that I found pretty telling. You know, who knows? It may have just been the way she phrased it, but it just said a lot to me. They said that Maxwell has been reading through millions of pages of evidence filed by the prosecutors. And her friend told the Daily Mail, quote, she believes there is not a single piece of evidence in those 2.5 million pages which corroborates any charges against her. That's a very different thing than Maxwell knowing that she's innocent and knowing that there wouldn't be anything to corroborate charges against her because she's innocent. I mean, why would an innocent woman be concerned about evidence that could corroborate charges against her? If she knows she's done nothing wrong, I mean, sure, you'd want to read through the documents yourself, but would she ever be really concerned that there'd be anything in there if she knows that she's done nothing wrong? Like I said, could just be the way she phrased it, but it just seemed very telling to me. So, all right, guys, we could know today or tomorrow. They're going to be making this decision very soon now because, you know, this week is Christmas. So I will let you know. As always, like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching and listening. I'll talk with you soon. Take care. Thanks for listening to Plants and Politics. The only way we can take our country and power back is to spread the truth and build an army. So remember to like, follow, subscribe, and share on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks again.